Well, hello there, person. Recently, I've had the opportunity to play Wraithbinder, four player, with my buddy and his kids, and uh, got to play it a lot, back to back. Lots of um, lots of bug fixes and performance improvements due to all that, because we had a lot of issues where uh, it would just suddenly crash, um, and I really wanted to fix what's going on. Like, why why the heck is it crashing? Why is it why is it interrupting our play? That's a real detriment to your playability of your game if it crashes. You know, that's like one of the most important things you can do. So I got a couple bugs fixed, and that was really great. And got to keep playing after those bug fixes. And one other issue that kind of cropped up was basically just general slowdown issues. After the game runs for 60 seconds or more, there's a lot of AI on the in in this whole map running um, running their AI behaviors. There's lots of creeps. There's lots of turrets shooting bones and arrows. Bow, an arrow itself is its own AI that flies for a minute, it gets created and all that. So there's a lot of uh, optimization that can be done in the AI system, or that was done in the AI system. Um, I've got a new little debug feature where I can set stop at, so it, it runs for 60 seconds if I got the stop at set for 60. So that's what just happened there, it stopped after 60 seconds. Um, so let's take a look at some of the bug fixes and optimizations that really helped to make Wraithbinder a lot more playable recently. Um, first one, let's go, let's go look at my, I made a little list of this because there was so much I've done in the last 10 days or so. Um, so this was the biggest crash here, which was super voodoo. I had no idea what the heck was going on. Um, it took me an entire day to fix this one. But what was happening was that I was getting this crash that was texture get name. It was inside Cocos 2DX. Um, basically, I'm I'm using uh, Cocos 2DX 3.9 underneath Kit Foo, which is uh, sort of an engine wrapper layer I've written around Cocos, so that I can easily later in my in my game uh, my game's development cycle, or perhaps way later on, I can or you know I can swap this out with a different engine if I need. Right, so. Basically, inside Coco's 2DX, it was crashing for get name, and I, it was very uh, unapparent what the heck was going on. It would crash in different places sometimes, but always the same, the same issue with the get name. And let's check out what actually fixed that. Basically, um, it was in update actions, and I have my own. So this is basically my wrapper layer around Coco's 2DX. Coco's uses this concept of nodes which manage sprites and labels and basically a sprite and a label and anything else that's a 2D entity derives itself from node. Um, so I have an, my own node which wraps around a Cocos node and my own nodes have my own action system and it runs my own action system runs in, inside all my own code doesn't use Cocos at all. Um, so what was going on with my own um, code here for updating actions. It would update an action, and um, then basically it sets when a when a child updates an action, it has this action called action remove. And um, if it runs this action remove, it sets a, a flag that it needs to remove itself. And then later, um, outside in the, in the outer loop here in this update actions, we can go node auto remove. This is a static method of auto of node which can basically remove the node and then returns true if it removed the node um, but what was happening was sprite there's a there's a special kind of node which is a sprite that's inside the sprite cache the sprite cache basically doesn't ever add itself to a parent or remove itself from a parent it adds itself once at the beginning of the whole game there's a thousand different sprites ready to use in this cache it never gets removed from its parent it just gets set to be invisible when it's not in use, all the sprites in that cache. So um, when we auto removed entities here, it was basically removing the the uh, the node from the child list, even if it was part of the sprite cache, which was super bad, right? So it had all these sprites which would um, run these actions and then it would they would be ready to remove themselves and uh, they would go ahead and remove themselves, but then they would not be uh, ready to use next time. So that's why it was super a super intermittent issue. It was very voodoo. I didn't know what the heck was going on uh, underneath everything because basically um, it was this basically there was this issue with sprites in the cache that shouldn't be removed. So 
We've got this little line of code. This one line of code right here kind of fixes it all right there. This was a day's worth of work. Um, you should have seen how messy the code was, though, until I finally found where this was. Uh, so that was a great bug fix. I mean, it was like, yes, finally, no more random crashes. Um, another crash that was happening, this one was luckily a lot more consistent. Um, we were getting this crash. We would play the game. We, we All four of us would be playing with the controllers on the couch. And uh, three or four minutes into play, boom, it just crashes. And it was saying E equals null pointer, and that's in um, ant create. Um, it goes, and here it is. It basically goes and gets a, um, this is also a cache right here. It, it caches up a whole bunch of ants, um, which are just a, basically a, a collection of components. Um, but whenever you create an entity, that ant right there should be null pointer. So we assert that here, assert E equals null pointer. And then we create a new int when we're ready to, to manage that. Um, so basically, uh, what was happening it was really simple. It was just that when when a player levels up their um, their skill to do the sky bot, I don't think we'll be able to do that in 60 seconds here playing the game. But um, basically, you have all these abilities you can use, and later on, and when you get to like level eight or nine or something like that you can get the skybot ability skybot is just allows you to build stuff it's your it's your jib for if you played songbringer the uh, skybot is jib and jib can allow you to go and build bridges and wards and mines and turrets and blockades and all this other fun stuff um but the problem was we had already reserved an entity uh number for the skybot um and then no, 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 that wasn't the issue. The issue was that basically the Skybot was getting created twice. So you, you create the Skybot once um, when you get the ability for Skybot, but then when you upgraded the ability to level two, it would also try and go and create the, uh, the Skybot. So we just had to basically make it so, uh, or I had to make it so it basically just didn't um, create the Skybot twice when you got the second and third levels of that ability. So that was actually really simple. Um, what were some of the other things? Okay, so moving on past some of the crashes, there were other crashes, but those were two of the notable ones. Um, the optimization of node visit was, oh, and this was a huge optimization. So um, let's oh, let's go go over to back to instruments here, and we have um, here's here's a real tiny sl slice of time running Wraith Binder. Um, uh, but it, it the, here's here's basically how it breaks down. You've got uh, you've got draw scene. Oh wait, no. You've got scheduler update scene render. These are two uh, two big things. Scheduler update runs the tick inside my game and the e animate inside my game. But scene render is what's going on inside Cocos. This is all Cocos is rendering, and um, what that's doing is it's walking through its node trees and calling node visit on um, all of its nodes and this was way more expensive so this 500 milliseconds right here was something like two entire seconds so 2000 milliseconds right here so we've seen like a I think it was like a 250 percent performance improvement in this the, the actual Cocos's node rendering scene rendering um, through just a couple little simple things check this out um, if we can get some of uh, uh where's a good way to show this here we go here's the commit um for making the nodes faster node visit basically um it was using this it had in cc node we can see that basically there's two versions of draw and visit for the node one is this blank version you can call which wasn't being used and that opens up the op the doors for a great optim optimization here basically um, because we're not using this default version of draw or visit we can get rid of the need for pushing all these matrices so it would always it's, it's there's a note here in coco's 2dx it says important to ease the migration to version 3 we still support the mat 4 stack we this so much so so wraith binder doesn't even use this mat 4 stack um, this is ancient code right here where it's pushing back these matrices and stuff like that not at all needed if you don't need to use the these blank versions of draw or visit um, so by commenting out these push matrices and load matrices for visiting every single child 
that was a huge part of the optimization here. The other part of the optimization, which created this whole 250% improvement here in this particular subsystem, was iterating over the children in a much more efficient fashion. Um, so we're here, here's the old version. Um, this is Cocos. This is straight from Cocos 2DX 3.9's uh, code base. It was iterating over all the children's size. So it gets the children's size, iterates over all that, and then every single, every single time it calls the iteration, it calls ch children dot at, which looks inside its its own vector, which is a which is derived from standard vector, which guarantees that every single element in the vector is contiguous. So because we know it's guaranteed that every element can be contiguous, we can loop over it in this much more efficient fashion. We call children.data to get a node pointer pointer to, um, um, to the beginning of the data, and then we just iterate over that by incrementing the, 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 the pointer. So we've got basically a double pointer optimization here, which is super duper fast compared to calling children.at, which is calling standard vector.at for every, was calling that for every single node which if it, it doesn't seem like a lot but when you count up how many nodes the scene has to render after with especially with four cameras with four cameras you're rendering almost four times as many nodes and labels and sprites and all this other 2d stuff so that was a huge optimization it made the game run a lot smoother basically if you if you took a big old time slice of wraith binder running um before that optimization, it would just be slammed at 100%, 100% the whole way. And then with that optimization, you see all these nice peaks and valleys where it has plenty of time to run its stuff, run all it needs to, and it can have time left over. So that was a big optimization. Um, and then another optimization, we got three more I want to mention here. Um, the next one here was collision system collides. So uh, let's look at the collision system here and collision system has two different ways of making itself faster for looking up collisions so let's talk, go ahead and, and uh, well yeah first we'll talk about this there's it uses grids basically so it creates a grid a two-dimensional grid of all of the entities with certain masks for the entire map of the game so as a player moves around, they would move within that grid. So uh, after a second, after the player moves from here to here, the player at the other place would have his his uh, his his entity ID number removed and put here. So basically, this grid allows uh, me to look up which entities are at a certain two-dimensional position and get that really fast. Um, the reason it's two-dimensional and not three-dimensional is because if we were if we were to go actual 3D with this, the, this grid would be huge in memory and would be incredibly f much slower to to look up. So this this 2D makes it fast look up. Um, but this this grid is like I said for entity ID numbers. So that means that at a certain position in two-dimensional space, you can have a bunch of different entity numbers right like entity number one could be here entity number two could have its corner in that same little block and still be considered part of that grid at that point so we could have 10 20 we could have multiple different entities um, being marked as at a certain point in the grid um, but collision detection is more than just which entities are at a certain point they are also what categories are at a certain point so Let's go to collision component and we'll show you some categories here. Um, here's all here's the 32 different categories. You can have here's all the team categories and here's like a player category. Here's a skybot category. Here's bosses, creeps, neutrals, etc. Weapons and other types of environment like ground, water, sky, etc. So all those have their own bit and um, the, the, combining those bits creates a mask which is considered basically a category. So a category is just a mask of bits. And uh, in the collision system, this is the optimization here, is basically to create another grid, which is for categories. So we can quickly look at a certain two-dimensional point in the game's world and say, hey, I know exactly which categories are at this point in the grid. Because categories are a bit mask, you can easily or those bits masks together. And you can say, all right, at this point, I have this bit and that bit and that bit boom, boom. it's a quick lookup 
to see like for example uh are there any players at this point in space are there any creeps right here is there anything at all at this point in space right so that makes a super fast lookup for um for for masks and what that allows is a function called collides to so this is a new collision system we uh, before i had a collision system called or a function called get collision and get collision would look inside the grid and for each one of the entity id numbers which i call an id um that's right here id um it would call this function it would say ah, what's your collision box do we have a collision here this is a pretty expensive function to call collides is much faster because collides can use the category grid and it takes its mask and says um, let's go and check inside that category grid and see if we have this category here first and so it can quickly look up and see hey do we even have this mask at all do I even need to go through the, the process of calling this more expensive get collision function and so we can optimize away a lot and what um, what that kind of allows What's, what system gets sped up the most from that optimization is pathfinding. So, because pathfinding, pathfinding is open, here we go. Pathfinding uses, or used to use the get collision version. This would basically call get collision. And if that collision returned an id of zero, meaning it didn't find any entities there, then this, uh, the pathfind, uh, uh, system would basically say, okay, this point in space is open. We can pathfind here. Um, but now it uses this much faster collides function just to see if there's any potential thing blocking it. Um, so that sped up the pathfinding a lot as well as some other uh, parts of collision, the collision detection and collision systems. Um, and then another part, another big optimization uh, in here was actually optimizing the move systems, get terrain. Um, so there's now two methods to call. Uh, so the, the move system has a terrain grid also. There's another grid here uh, of terrain heights. So at one point in the map, like for example, let's just run it real quick. Um, and where you're starting at in the map is a height of about 100. Um, if I go and I, if I fall off right here, I'm in God mode so I can walk around. If I fall all the way off, now I'm at a height of about zero. So there's zero terrain tight here. Now I'm going to go back over here and boom, whoa, whoa, we're, we're way back up. Now we're at like about 150. So that terrain grid was being looked up in a much slower way. There's two different versions of this. There's the box method and the position method. The box basically goes and looks at every single, the box is just a two-dimensional uh, box which is a, a lower left corner and upper right corner this more expensive version of get terrain um, looks for ev looks at every single uh, corner of that box and says what's the uh, terrain height there what's the terrain height there what's the terrain height there what's the terrain height there and then averages them all and returns the result so that's four different lookups a lot of different math going on with points being set and z positions and all that stuff so it's a much more expensive version but get terrain z with just a point can return straight from the terrain grid in a quick old call so that made that made uh pathfinding even faster so it would actually the move systems get terrain z would be we calls that more efficient uh method there uh there's another thing here the ai system behavior values this was another this was a huge optimization to the ai system it's kind of ridiculous how uh, how much this improved but i actually wrote I, I had this suspicion that the ai system was what was causing a lot of these slowdown issues uh so i actually created this sort of profiling system which went and looked at every single one of the ai uh every single one of its behaviors let's take a look at some, some ai real quick uh so like bot here's the bot and um here's a um a stun behavior so it says all right if uh, my hit points, if I'm damaged right now, and if I'm targeting a mar marker, then set my target to none, path to none, vector to none, and then maybe set mode 50. Um, so that that whole sequence of AI, um, this is basically an AI script. This is my behavior tree um, script, but basically in the AI system, um, let's look at uh, what, we, what would be a good example of this. Um, uh, hold on, int val equals, where's a good example of this? Come on. 
this is something that'll work right here. Um, in the AI system, there was, uh, if we were to go to behavior, behavior is basically a, um, a, a vector of children and a vector of values. So the inside the, uh, this bots right here, this is, uh, each behavior, each one of these lines in this behavior tree is becomes a behavior structure. So this is its own structure right here, sequence stun. This is its own structure right here, if HP damaged. And this is, if HP damaged, is a child of sequence stun. So that's why in behavior we have a vector of children and we used to have a vector of values. But the huge import, uh, optimization here is to make the values much faster look up by using a plain old C array of values rather than a vector of values. And what that allows is faster lookup of all these things. So I have all these defines right here for int val zero. That's behavior dot value zero zero dot int val. And you can imagine if this values right here, if this is a vector, and that means it's having to call operator brackets to look inside its vector and get element zero. But with this plain old C array, calling this right here is super fast because all we're doing is just accessing element zero of the C array. So that's a huge performance improvement. Instead of using vectors, we're using a plain old C array. Uh, and then, um, oh, we already talked about the AI pathfinding optimizations. Okay, so shoot, gosh. A lot of a lot of things right there in this video and things that got that have gone over this is all stuff that basically has happened in the last 10 days or so of, of optimizations but what what's the overall result there the overall result is that if I were to go back to code from 10 days ago and run it for about two minutes this would start slowing down so much that it would definitely be running under 30 frames per second um, which is starting to become not even playable uh, it's definitely uncomfortable to play as a player, especially when you've got four different players playing on the screen. Um, so with that, so now I can run this, and uh, it's taking up a lot of extra time with the current debug mode I've got it in right now. If I go all the way to that, now we're now we're at debug mode zero, which basically for, for, say verbosity zero is what I like to call it. Uh, but basically, that just means that um, there's no extra debug information on the screen, and that means the game actually runs a lot faster. And also, I'm recording a video right now, so that's causing a lot of. Um, a lot of slowdown too but still you know after running it for a little while we're still above 40 frames per second and then this that that's it just stopped again because of my stop at code so basically the game can run for a good amount of time three minutes five minutes that's a long time to test and see like hey after all those minutes the game is still running above 50 frames per second most of the time still running at 60 frames a second even with four cameras so that's the result of all these optimizations and bug fixes is just a more playable version of Wraithbinder. So that's it for this video and uh, thanks for watching. And we'll catch you on the next one. All right, later.